now we shall learn about the rebellion of Surapura and Koppal. Surapura. Surapura, where is it? It is at 50 kilometers from the present day Yadgir. What is the place? Its name? Yadgir. 50 kilometers from Yadgir is Surapura. This was an important place since the time of Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb was the last, not the last. Students, now we will be learning about the rebellion of Surapura and Koppal. First, let us find out where is Surapura. It is 50 kilometers from Yadgir. First, let's look for Yadgir and then you will find Surapura. Students, look. It's in India. It's in Karnataka. And there we have Yadgir. So students, Yadgir is here very close to Gulbarga. This was a very important place. Why? Since the rule of Aurangzeb. Aurangzeb was a Mughal ruler students. During the reign of Nizam of Hyderabad and the Marathas, it became a vassal state. What is a vassal state? A vassal state is a state that is not independent by itself. It is having a superior on top. Okay? Now let's go further. Most of the territory was lost and Surapura remained restricted to a very small territory. During the reign of Venkatapa, it raised a rebellion against the British. So during the reign of whom? Venkatapa. Now let's understand and know who is Venkatapa Nayaka. He came to the throne after the death of his father Krishna Nayaka. When was he born? He was born in 1834 and he was very very young when he became a king. His ascendance to the throne was opposed by Krishna Nayaka's brother Peddanaya. This resulted in internal struggles. So now the king has died. The king's son, a young child, has become a king now. And the king's brother also wants to become the king. So there is fight. There is internal struggle. The British started interfering in the internal matters of this family. In 1842, they appointed Meadows Taylor as their resident. Resident means this person will remain in the kingdom, will give all the internal details to the British government, to the English East India Company and they will also station a portion of their army for support. They appointed Meadows Taylor as their resident and gained proxy power. What's the meaning of proxy power? Though the king was the ruler, whatever this British Meadows Taylor told that is what the king would do. So the power was actually in his hands though he was not officially the king. Taylor was a reformist. He wanted reforms and changes. He developed the Surapura princely state. Princely state means it's a state but the main control is under the British. Pitta Nayaka was appointed as the Diwan. Diwan means like a prime minister. Taylor conducted the land survey. He conducted land survey to understand how much land is under agriculture, how much land is wasteland, how much land is good and so on. The revenue of the state increased due to the measures implemented by Taylor because now they know exactly that they have this much amount of land. They are supposed to get certain amount of revenue and so on. He took measures to educate Venkatapa Nayaka properly, the young son of the king who died. And Venkatapa Nayaka came to power in 1853. Now, everything looks good. He was getting educated. Why was there a rebellion so suddenly? Let us look at it. The British government was observing the various developments of Surapura. In 1857, what happened students? First war of Indian independence. And in 1857 also, it came to the notice of the government that the representatives of Nana Sahib were present in Surapura. Nana Sahib, revolt of Indian independence. His representatives were there in Surapura. Nana Sahib is an enemy of the British. So, that created a problem. This made the British suspicious. They started doubting the King Venkatapa Nayaka. The British appointed an officer named Campbell to report on the various activities of the king. The officer submitted a report to the resident of Hyderabad that the king is involved in maladministration. So Campbell sent a report saying there is maladministration. 
poor administration cheating going on here Venkata Panayaka is usually presented as the leader of 1857 revolt in Karnataka by the historians the british army captured surapura in 1858 the war continued there is still confusion regarding how venkata panayaka died now students this brings us to the end of the rebellion at surapura now we will learn about virappa of koppal koppal rebellion is a very important rebellion in various armed rebellions against the british the koppal and the surrounding regions were under the rule of the nizam of hyderabad there were exploitations so a few zamindars who rebelled against the nizam so the nizam was exploiting and these zamindars revolted against the nizam virappa is a very important person among the rebels he was a zamindar himself students see so rare first we saw that kings were rebelling Kittu Rani Chennamma was a queen who was rebelling. We saw farmers who rebelled, and now what are we looking at? A zamindar has rebelled against the British and occupied the fort of Koppal and other forts in the vicinity. Many farmers and zamindars supported after realizing his motive or his plan. The British then went to the Nizam because the zamindar's enemy is Nizam. and the zamindar's enemy is british so british and nizam became friends and the british went to the nizam and took the nizam's army to defeat virappa virappa had less soldiers he died fighting the army of the british the british captured back all the forts though this rebellion was short it proved something virappa proved to be a very good warrior Now students let us look at the rebellion of Bedas of Halagali you also have a chapter in your kannada language saying Halagali Bedaru Halagali is a small village of Mudhol taluk of Belgaum let's look at where is Mudhol sorry sir students now let's look at where is Halagali This is where the rebellion happened. Very close to Belgaum, students. See, Belgaum's right here. Halagali is here. Why did they rebel against the British? So they had arms with them. They had some weapons with them, and the British told them to surrender the weapons. So they rebelled. The Bedas of Manturu, Budni, Alagundi, and neighborhood villages joined Halagali. Bedas the british army entered halagali village to suppress the rebellion the, they suppressed the bedas in a very inhuman way and they hanged them to death so students this brings us to the end of the chapter now let's focus on the questions at the back side the first anglo mysore war took place between dash and dash hyder ali and the british The second Anglo-Mysore War ended with Dash Treaty, Sal by Treaty. Kittu Rani Chennamma adopted a boy named Shivalingappa. Rayana of Kittu state belonged to Dash village, Sangoli village. The name itself says Sangoli Rayana. Sunapura is in the present district of Yadgir or Yadagiri. The Bedas of Dash village of Belgaum district rebelled against the British Halagali. Amar Sulya rebellion was basically a Dash rebellion, a farmers rebellion. Long answers. How did Hyder Ali come to power? Death of Chikka Deva Raja Wadiyar created various political challenges in Mysore state. Hyder Ali won the hearts of the Mysore army with a shrewd smart political moves he weakened the power of the dalavoy and sidelined the king krishna raja and that's how he came to power what are the effects of the second anglo mysore war the following were the effects the british suffered financial setbacks in pulikattam soligno 
However, by entering the Salvai Agreement, the British were successful in winning over the Marathas and the Nizam of Hyderabad on their side. Hyder Ali died due to illness during the war. The war was led by Tipu Sultan later, the son of Hyder Ali. What were the conditions of the Sri Rangpatnam Treaty? The third Anglo-Mysore war ended along with the Sri Rangpatnam Treaty. Tipu was forced to part with half of his kingdom, was forced to pay 3 crore rupees as war damage fee and had to pledge two of his children as guarantee against this payment. He was forced to release the prisoners of war and the British withdrew the combined army from Sri Rangpatnam. The fourth Anglo-Mysore war strengthened the position of the British in Mysore discussed. The fourth Anglo-Mysore war had started in 1799. The British were successful in destroying the strong fort. Tipu died while fighting the war against the British during 1799. Along with his death, the British became happy because they felt as if the entire India was now finally under their control. Most of Tipu's territories were shared by the British, Marathas and the Nizams of Hyderabad. A small region named Mysore Princey State was given to the royal representative of the Mysore warriors. All these developments strengthen the position of British in Mysore. Explain the method of resisting the British power by Dondia Vag. Dondia Vag resisted the British power in the following manner. The British organized attacks upon places such as Honali, Harihara and others which were under the control of Dondia and due to this he lost his base. After the capture of Shikaripura, Dondia ran towards Gutti, which was under the control of the Nizam. When Nizam's army attacked Gutti, Dondia ran towards the region of Maratha. The Marathas attacked him and snatched most of Swiss horses, camels and arms. The British army then followed him and killed many of his followers. Dondia recaptured Shikaripura fort and the British army, assisted by the local rulers, managed to scatter him again. The British tried to defeat Dondia's army and attacked him from all the four directions. He was followed by the British army when he left Raichur and then he was killed in the end. Dondia continued his warfare till the last moment of his life. Explain the method adopted by Rayana to find the British. Rayana fought against the British in the following manner. He developed a sense of nationalism and organized an army of 500 men. He held secret meetings at sensitive places and aimed at looting the treasury and taluk offices of the British. He thought he was being instigated. The British thought that he was being instigated by Kiturani Chanama. So they shifted her from which prison to which prison? From Baila Hongala to Kusugul prison, they shifted her. However, the British captured Rayana in a cunning manner. Many ballads are still sung in his praise and bravery. Explain the contribution of Puttaba Sappa of Kodagu in freedom struggle. He was included among the three people who organized the rebellion against the British. To, why? Because the British dethroned the king of Haleri dynasty, Chikka Veera Rajendra. After the capture of Kalyana Swami, Puttabhasabha led the Amara Sulya rebellion and organized the rebels and started the rebellion in the hilly region. They marched towards Bangalore to capture it. They looted the treasury and prison of Bantwal. The British thought of suppressing the rebellion by seeking army from Telicherry, Kannur and Bombay. Getting information about this, Puttabhasabha and his associates fled to Sulya. Although the rebellion was not successful and Puttabhasapa was captured and hanged along with his associate, it holds a very important place in the freedom struggle. Discuss the Surapura rebellion in brief. The British used to interfere in the internal matters of Surapura. They appointed Taylor as their political agent in 1840 and he had proxy power over Surapura. While observing various developments of Surapura, the British became suspicious on the intentions of the king due to the presence of the representatives of Nana Sahib. They appointed another officer named Campbell who submitted a report to the resident of Hyderabad that the king of Surapura is involved in maladministration. The British army struggled against Venkatapa Nayaka, the leader of the revolution of 1857. This brings us to the end of the chapter. 
opposition to British rule in Karnataka. A very important chapter from examination point of view. I know some names may be really difficult for you to remember. But if you think of it like a story students, you all will remember it. Work hard, write a lot, do good practice for your exams. Okay students.